Hello everyone. Due to so much going on in the Middle East right now, in Israel, and pretty much every country adjacent to it and everyone with interest in the region, it's kind of hard to find news about Ukraine right now. Today's Sunday, so I had a chance to talk to my parents. So here are some of the major pieces of the news about Ukraine that we have as of right now. This particular clip is from the Associated Press, but there are other sources confirming this information. Uh, apparently, North Korea delivered 1,000 containers of equipment and munitions for Russia uh, to fight against Ukraine. Uh, they didn't wait long. Remember, they just had this conversation, I think, just a few weeks ago. So they didn't sit on their hands. Uh, now... Considering how isolated North Korea has been and how prone it is to distort the information about its own military might, much like Russia, it is very possible that what they're giving Russia is not in very good shape and fairly outdated. However, that doesn't change the fact that Russia has allies who will give it weapons without question. And for Ukraine, it's like taking forever. Something to think about. So the Battle of Avdiivka continues and uh, this situation uh, is changing very rapidly. So as I mentioned yesterday, it is true that Russia brought a lot to Avdiivka. Uh, the troops on the ground had air support, they had tanks, uh, they had rockets, etc., etc., but apparently uh, they burned through all that fairly quickly. And soon uh, they, instead of asking for additional ammunition, they started asking for additional body bags. And when I asked my parents about this this morning, they're saying that actually uh, Ukrainian armed forces have been successful in pushing uh, the Russian troops further northeast away from Avdiivka to another town. So that is definitely going on. And there is no doubt in my mind that by doing a series of focused attacks uh, in the Northeast, like in the Sumy region, in the East, uh, they're trying to distract from the Southern Front. Because, as I mentioned before, in that location, uh, Ukrainian troops have a very real chance of cutting off Russian military from um, all other support. And Russians do understand how dangerous this is. So this is basically an attempt uh, to make Ukraine dissipate its forces and uh, ruin the focus. So this is exactly what I was talking about. Remember, I expressed concern with what's going on in Israel. What will happen to the aid to Ukraine? At at this point, the proposed weapons package includes both Ukraine and Israel. Uh, Joe Biden has been working really hard to get the U.S. Congress moving to get the package to, you know, to be approved. However, we also know, those of us living in the United States, the utter state of chaos that our Congress is in right now. And my concern is that with not one but two allies on the line, Republicans are going to use this as leverage, trying to negotiate one or both out of the budget deal. Uh, that said, apparently uh, U.S. is not the only one who is considering using frozen Russian assets to aid Ukraine. In fact, other nations, European nations, are considering the same thing because all of them had dealings with Russia and all of them who participated in the sanctions have some Russian assets frozen. And apparently, Belgium has already handed over what they had. And good on you, Belgium. It's much appreciated. But of course, again, depending on how big is the government, how big is the bureaucracy, and how strong are the pro-Russian sentiments in 
the government of any given country, the process can take a lot longer and be a lot more wrought with controversy.